James Calm, coming to you from uh, Roebling Avenue in East Williamsburg, and we're going to visit the front room gallery and see a sculpture exhibition by Melissa Pocorny. Let's run in. Use of uh, everyday and plastic materials like you might find at a Home Depot or the Lowe's store. She, she combines this together in unusual forms to sort of make you question the associations you've had. This is a small almond sculpture called Stay. Looks like a little cup of fluid up here on the on the edge. I don't know. Is that a urine sample or something like that? And there's a simulated uh, stone for my guy on the side. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this piece is Viola. Got woven nylon rope, chains, any sizes of chains. We've got a little deer head. He wants to bring a sense of uh, some kind of synthetic, natural commingling of elements here. piece is called Maybe Sparrow. It's probably about four feet tall and extends out from the wall about six feet, six and a half feet. This piece is called No Outlet with Target. I wonder if that relates to Sartre's No Exit. She's also got her little synthetic squash with spikes in it. I think this one is called Monkey. I would say it's approximately 30 inches high. Got some sparkly flocking in the base. And here's another cup of yellow fluid. Monkey My Pal, 1938-1948. Cat. And 
this piece is called Left Behind. And finally, those cups of yellow fluid have been thrown down and fluid drizzles out on the floor. We've got a little Scotty dog. Scotty. And oh, there's a butterfly trapped under glass in one of the bricks. This piece is called Winter Day Rabbit. And here we have a little, little rabbit huddled away near his bricks. Cargo netting. Yeah, Melissa. Melissa. Uh -huh. um, and you're the artist. Yes. And you're a sculptor. Yes, I am. And uh, this is your latest uh, group of work. Do you have a theme here for the show? Um, the theme is it, it's really primarily visual, and it's based on landscape. It's based on passing things by on the street and seeing things on a regular basis. Um, so it, it's it's primarily about just looking and seeing and and um, sort of recreating some of those experiences. Um, but it's also about um, it's about our relationship to the built world as well as our relationship to the natural world and how oftentimes the natural world is excluded from that built situation. That's so what I was going to say. There's a you know you've got a very unique selection of materials that you're using. Could you talk a little bit about where you get them and why you picked certain things? Okay, um, I use a lot of found objects in the work and a lot of per, you know things that I get um, at uh, kind of hobby stores. So a lot of the animals that you see are things that I've picked up at places like uh, Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And um, I feel like when I use those things in my work, in some ways I'm removing them from their, their doom of sort of being just a purely decorative object. And I'm placing them back in a situation where they have a life. So in some ways I feel like Putting them in this works in a, in a weird way sort of reanimates them um, and it, it, it gives them another purpose. So it changes the status of the object and I'm really interested in that. I'm interested in how the, the status of an object slides from one, one um, genre to another, from one situation to another. Tell me about these, uh, these cups of yellow <laughs> fluid. I was wondering what, what is this, yellow, what does this represent, what does this stand for? Okay. You know, this is a perfect example of how things happen in a studio and in process. And part of the process of making this work is mixing up a lot of resin because I use a lot of cast things in my work and I use a lot of resin on surfaces and such. And um, when I made this particular piece, I felt like there needed to be something in this trough. And part of the residue in my studio are always these mixing cups. And I love the mixing cups. And I just picked up a mixing cup and I put it on the work and I thought, I really like that because it echoes, it mimics what happens to work, right? You put work out in a public space and people put things on it. Or they throw people garbage. pee on it. <laughs> or they pee on it, right. Or at openings, people put their cups on the edges of things. And it really made a lot of sense. So it was accidental and it didn't feel forced. So, you know, that's the kind of, those sort of weird contingencies that happen in, in, in process that I really love. And how about the, the fabric elements that you're adding? You've got these targets and kind of sewn things on a couple of these pieces that sort of add a uh, color uh, accent and uh, sort of there, focus. There, right? and there, it, it both it talks about the, the, the process of there pointing to something, and that's the that's sort of what a target does as well. It right. makes you look, or it makes you aim. It makes you look at something or aim at something. So it made sense to me. But what, where the targets actually come from is um, my son. My son has a, a archery a archery target in the backyard, and I look at that archery target all the time, and I love it's it. What it's every New York kid it. should be having is a Absolutely. bows and arrows. Absolutely. So um, it, it's both, it, it ties into the show, but it also is a personal thing. Okay. Well, thanks, Melissa, for your little explanation here, and congratulations. Thank I think you. the show looks great. Thank you very much.